Hello everybody, welcome back to another Most Monday. Today I'm here with not Carter and not Gina. Uh, well, I, I'm here. What? I'm here. I I made it. I made it to the recording. What are you talking about? Introducing Gino. Oh my God, he's here. He's here. Wow, this is amazing. Oh my God. What? Jesus Christ. How, how is he here? How are you here? I rocked up on time this time, I guess. He rocked up on time. Oh my God. Yeah, where is Carter, by the way? Where, like, can we talk about Carter? Why, why, if, if I'm so bad, what about Carter? But but we are watching Athletes Who are, who Got Caught, Cheating Live, Part 2. So we, we watched Part 1, we watched Part 2, and then there's a Part 3 coming soon, maybe. I don't know. Uh, uh, no, retract. I haven't watched the first one, so how am I supposed to get context for this video? Gina hasn't watched the first one, but I'm just really mad at it. It's, yeah. Yeah, okay. In the sporting world, athletes, coaches, and teams will go to extraordinary lengths to try and get the upper hand. And while some train hard, oh God, others bro. resort to foul play to claim a spot on the yeah, podium. But once they get caught, it's game over. With that, let's take a look You'd at be even surprised more how many people athletes can be, who were caught you know, cheating even, their way to victory. Even bro. more athletes, Gino. Yeah. Not bribed. Not Crash gate. Oh, Some forgot. cheats can take just seconds to execute, but as Formula, yeah, Formula One, one team Renault discovered, actually even the most kind of, seemingly don't they simple check the cars? schemes can have they disastrous the cars, don't they? repercussions. Really? On they the don't? They have to check the cars, wouldn't they? Spanish Make sure they're legal. Grand Prix, Renault racer Nelson Piquet Jr. accidentally smashed into the barrier on the 17th cheating? turn. Miraculously, he walked away uninjured, but a safety car was deployed, holding up the racers behind. It gave Nelson's teammate, Fernando Alonso, a fortunate advantage, <laughs> and he went on to wow. win the race for Renault. Even though it looked like a dangerous stroke of luck, it would eventually transpire that there was something else driving Renault's wondrous win. In 2009, Nelson hit another metaphorical wall when he was axed from the team after failing to score any points during the season. Enraged by the decision, Nelson's father revealed that his son had been ordered to crash by none other than Renault's uh, managing director, uh, Flavio uh, Pittore, oh. and director of engineering, Pat Simmons. Don't they? These two big bosses had orchestrated Alonso's success by sacrificing young that, Nelson, that reminds me threatening of to Ford cut him from the team real. if he didn't go through with it. He was given explicit instructions to crash on the 14th lap at the 17th turn, as there was no crane on that stretch to help remove the car. This would force a safety car at the opportune wow. moment and hand Alonso the win on a silver platter. After a thorough investigation, Renault apologetically admitted to the flagrant race fixing, and the International Automobile Federation banned Briatore mm. and Simmons from Don't the say. sport. Ooh. However, the ban was That's unbelievably oh. overturned by the French courts what? in 2010, <laughs> meaning both Only, yeah. men were free to return to Formula One by 2013. What? How agonizingly frustrating is that? Ugh, let's relieve some of that stress for a moment. If you think Briatore deserved a harsher punishment, smash that <laughs> like button. If you think Simmons should steer clear from the sport forever, slam that subscribe no. button. No, and if you we think won't. neither yeah, of them yeah, should I'm be allowed so near a racetrack ever again, hit both. No, no, we won't. Marwin hits. His names. Soccer is often called the beautiful game, even though it's had its share of ugly cheating scandals. Some are famously dramatic, like rolling around on the field like a baby after brief contact. However, others are a little more subtle. Uh, Just ask Augsburg FC's Marwin Hitz, who was caught playing dirty back in 2015. Yeah. After a penalty was awarded to Cone FC striker Anthony Modest, the, yeah. Hitz deliberately dug his studs into the yeah. turf of the penalty spot. He swiveled around like a bizarre ballerina and tore up chunks of the turf before heading back wow. to the goal. As Modest ran at the ball, he suddenly slipped on the sabotage turf, allowing Hitz to make the save that would see Augsburg win the match 1-0. After being picked up by the video ref, the Swiss-born goalkeeper <laughs> attempted to play down the incident, but later admitted on Twitter that he was in the wrong. 
The apology was enough to satisfy the officials what? of the German Football League Bundesliga, but he wasn't let off the hook entirely. Okay, good, Augsburg good. facility boss Hans Ruther sent Hitz a 122 oh, euro what? bill to cover the cost of repairing oh, the pitch. Oh, While it big was hardly shit. a drop in the ocean for the now 1 million yeah, exactly. euro a year player, both Hitz and Augsburg FC pledged to make a charity donation in lieu of a real fine. Who knew something so wholesome could come out of cheating so badly? Vincenzo uh, Nibali. Cycling. Thanks to the aforementioned Lance Armstrong, cycling now has a reputation for being filled with like-minded cheaters. However, the punishing uphill climbs and high speeds have this led to the more motor one, is it? methods of cheating that don't involve drugs, as Vincenzo Nibali here no. is about to demonstrate. No, the 2014 so. Tour de France winner was involved in a crash during the 2015 oh, Vuelta shit. a España. After falling well behind the front runners, Nibali was suddenly approached by a team car and suffered from a case of what pro cyclists call sticky bottle. This happens when riders return to team cars to retrieve drinks without stopping. But when the handover occurs, the person in the car uh, holds onto the bottle for an extra uh, few seconds, effectively towing the rider along to give them an illegal boost. In Nibali's case, he what must have been the really shit? thirsty because the team car what? practically what the threw shit? him off into the what? sunset. <laughs> While many professional cyclists use this tactic subtly, Nibali's obviously free ride, which was hilariously what? What captured by an shit? eye in the sky, that is him so obvious. Both he and team director Alexander Schaefer, who was driving the car, received a fine of just 200 what? euros. Considering it's a practice a that almost sport. every cyclist participates in, do you think the judgment was fair, or should Nibali have received harsher punishment Probably, for yeah. his sticky joyride? Sal Alosi some of football's most notable cheating here. scandals <laughs> focus on doping, deflated pigskins, and illegal negotiations. But in 2010, New York Jets strength coach Sal Alosi found a new way to cheat in the yeah. field. In a game against the Miami Dolphins, Sal went out of his way to trip well, up no. Dolphins gunner Nolan Carroll on I, the sideline. No. Fortunately, Carroll was uninjured and returned to the game. However, <laughs> that is so deadly obvious. Caught the attention of CBS sport commentators, who rightfully threw him some well-earned shade. NFL. Watch the knee here being stuck out on purpose I to trip up Nolan Carroll. On, on Not sure who that person is, but they should be ashamed of themselves for that type of action that has no place. Those words must have hit Alosi hard as he came forward the next day and apologized for his callous actions. While the NFL tallied up an appropriate punishment, it also no. emerged that Alosi had ordered inactive Jets players to form a human barricade on the sideline throughout the game. As they stood shoulder to shoulder like a Rockets kick line, the lineup ultimately made it harder for the opposing team to pass through. With all the unsportsmanlike behavior racked up against him, Pelosi was slapped with a fine of $25,000 oh, yes, okay, and was suspended better, without pay for uh, the rest of the doing season. Fines, he resigned from the Jets in January 2011 and hasn't worked in the NFL Holy since. Shit. I guess he may have been a decent person like you or I once, but then he took a gunner to the knee. Breezy AC Manzale the ex-NFL quarterback Wait, Johnny Manziel made headlines recently oh. for cheating on his Wait, wife. Wait, what? But if we rewind back to February 2019, his wife, Brie Tiasi Manziel, also made headlines for cheating. Wait, Although this is going oh, so off topic. We're talking the about sports cheating, model, not cheating on your partner. 2019 run like a diva oh, well, half well, well, marathon, well, 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 completing the two-lap course in one hour and 58 minutes We're talking about sports. no prior training. Considering the average half Wait. marathon time for non-elite female runners no. is around 2 hours and 24 minutes, this was quite impressive. That was until people took a closer look at her mile split times. She'd hit the 6.4 mile mark in an hour and 31 minutes, but had finished the entire 13.1 mile course just 27 minutes mm. later. For this to have been possible, TAC Manziel would have needed to run the final 6.7 miles at an unbelievably what? speedy pace of 4 minutes a mile. For reference, the women's world record for the fastest mile run was 4 minutes and 12 seconds, and that was just one. 
So, T.A.C. Manziel would have needed to break that record six consecutive times after already having run over six miles, and all without any training. While it was obvious that she'd been cutting some corners, she angrily took to Instagram to prove her innocence by posting this picture of the 11-mile marker. Wow. So, how could she have taken the photo if Maybe she hadn't run day. the whole course? Despite her defense, online sleuths revealed she'd probably only run the first lap of the two-lap course, taking photos of every marker along the way. It may have all been a simple mistake of turning left at this point, where she should have turned right to complete the second lap. However, all her <coughs> bragging on now-deleted social media posts and no hint of an apology has left this fitness model looking like an iconic cheater. Must run in the family, I guess. Ramado Fanati Keeping your cool is an integral part of being a professional athlete. Something that motorcyclist Romano Fanati clearly doesn't know anything about. Competing as part of the 2018 San Marino Moto 2, Fanati was aggressively overtaken Whoa, by is this where he, Stefano is this Monza. Like one of those stick out the Enraged by the maneuver, Fanati decided to undertake one of the most stupid and dangerous cheats in sporting history. As they reached speeds of 140 miles per hour, Fanati leant over and pulled the front brake of Monzi's bike. The idiotic scheme could have crashed and killed his opponent, but he clearly thought he could get away with the split-second decision. <coughs> Fortunately, cameras caught every well, second of, of his stupidity. He was immediately disqualified, yeah. his racing license was revoked, and his contract with the Marinelli snipers was terminated. It was such a serious breach of conduct that the Italian justice system uh, even considered putting him on trial for attempted murder. Mm. Romano later apologized for his horrendous <laughs> actions, but very few believed it was sincere. After all, this moron had a history of kicking other competitors' bikes mid-race, right. and even turning their engines off at the starting line. I think we can all agree he was probably just sorry he got caught. Alessandro Andrioli as methods of cheating get more and more sophisticated, so does the technology designed hey. to spot them, mm -hmm. something that cyclist Alessandro Andrioli found out the hard way. The 53-year-old came third in an amateur cycling event in Bidizzole, Italy in July 2017. But after he crossed the finish line, ah, he was it. suddenly flagged by race officials. Without his knowing, they've been using a brand new weapon in their arsenal against cheating, thermal cameras. With this new tech at their fingertips, officials could easily scan bikes for suspicious-looking heat signatures, indicating yeah. if there were hidden electric motors inside the athlete's equipment. No, Unfortunately, I'm, 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 the yeah. seat tube I'm, I'm, of Andrioli's Argon 18 bike lit up on the camera like a Christmas tree, and officials ordered him really to bring bright, his bike around enough. for inspection. But before they could disassemble it, Andrioli admitted his guilt and was disqualified from the standings. While this cheat thwarting tech has been used to successfully level the playing field, it's not accurate enough to prove any foul play for certain. Back in 2016, for example, thermal cameras supposedly caught Slovenian rider Primoz Roglic trying to cheat his way through the Strada Bianca race. Hotspots on the thermal images of his bike indicated there was something kicking out a lot of heat in the rear wheel, more than what would be expected from friction mm -hmm. alone. Even though his bike was never checked for a hidden motor, the images were broadcast across French television for the nation to judge. Many believed the rider was guilty of mechanical <sighs> doping, although Roglic strongly denied the allegations. But further suspicions were raised against him. Just the previous month, Roglic had made a suspiciously late bike change during the Gira d'Italia time trial. While he achieved the fastest time out of the group, this change meant his winning bicycle hadn't been tested for a motor then either. Even though the allegations were peddled against him, the thermal images on their own ultimately weren't enough to condemn him of any wrongdoing. But what do you think? Does it really look like Roglic mm. cheated wow. using a hidden motor? And I'm, do I don't you think guys know of any other like stories of athletes cheating? Let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. All right, that's it for today's Most Monday. Uh, <laughs> Gina, thank, thank you for coming along. It's, uh, it's all right. I, I feel like a special guest right now, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you pretty much are a special guest. All right, see you guys later. Subscribe, like 200 subscribers, and uh, $1 for every subscriber. 
that when we oh. reach 200. But where are we getting the money from, bruh? You... Okay, we now you've done it. that. Guess what? You're paying for it. Uh, nah. And it starts from 125. So nah. right now you got nah. four dollars. See you guys. Have fun. <laughs>